Risk of Rain 2. Is it worth a play in 2024? Well, with the rise in unique roguelikes in the last few years, it's hard to choose just one, as they're all polished perfection in their own interesting ways. So should you pick it up and give it a go after all these years? Well, it's Marco here from Easily Distracted Games, and today I'll be taking you through this adrenaline-pumping, bungus-bumping, Mithrix-mashing game. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I just want to say that if you're enjoying these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I also wanted to say that I've put in some hours into this game, so please take my views and opinions as you want. However, I haven't played this game in ages and wanted to see if it can still grab my attention as it's rare for me to find a game that I can return to these days. Risk of Rain 2 follows the crew of the UES safe travels as they try to find the UES contact light and any survivors along their path. They have to try and survive the hostile wildlife and environment as difficulty increases over time navigating Petrichor 5 via the teleporters strewn across the entire planet. Risk of Rain 2, much like its predecessor, is a roguelike with a heavy emphasis on effective item usage and quick reflexes. I played the original version on PlayStation many, many years ago, and already then the game mechanics got me hooked. Then the sequel was released, now using a third-person perspective, but with still the same challenging gameplay mechanics. See, the goal or objective for each run is to complete each level by killing waves of enemies and a much stronger boss, all getting stronger each second of play. While trying to find the teleporter to get to the next stage, you'll find some unique and interesting items along the way. And wow, this is where things get interesting. To complete a run, you first start by choosing a character. Some are obviously locked when you first start and require you to complete certain challenges. Same goes with the items, even your loadouts. Standard roguelike, you know how it goes. Each character is unique and will appeal to your individual style of play. I would highly recommend trying out all of them, as they might surprise you once you get a good grip of the game and start learning the ropes. When you first start, you have no items and are only equipped with your initial loadout. Killing enemies or finding the money pool boxes give you cash and you use this cash to open crates which can provide you with items ranging from just common ones to ones that are extremely rare. Oh, and items stack so you can find yourself with some pretty broken builds which I'll get to later. So why do you need such intense firepower? <laughs> Well, that comes down to the game's main dopamine field mechanics. Every second increases the enemy's strength. This means that you just can't parade around the level like a buffoon, else you might find yourself struggling to take down bosses in the late game. Beginners will often spend 10 or more minutes on the first stage and be like, hell, I got so many of these cool items. Big mistake, my friends. Next level, you're going to be already on that hard difficulty, so you're going to get wrecked pretty soon. Each run has six levels distributed across these unique large biomes and each run randomly generates all the item locations and what these items will be. This again feeds your dopamine brain as it's rare to get the same run twice if ever. Perhaps you collect multiple go-tos as this item increases your speed making you run around like a crazy person. All those incredible fire and ice bands, you know the ones that ignite your enemies on crit hits. Mm, just so good. Some of my favorite items include say the lens maker's glasses and you just stack a whole bunch of these onto your face and they just increase the amount of critical strike that you do which deals so much double damage and then you get the bustling fungus or the bungus and this heals you if you're standing still. So shout out to all my engineers out there for keeping your turrets alive. Yeah boy. Then the ATG missiles. These just shoot a whole bunch of rockets. The soldier syringe. Oh, inject enough of these and then they're just going to be increasing your attack speed by 15% and they stack. What? Then I get the spinal tonic which dramatically increases all of your attacks for a few seconds like you hooked up onto an LSD cocaine trip. Then I like to pair this much like a good cheese and wine combo with the gesture of the drowned shell that automatically fires your special item all while reducing the cooldown time. Now we're cooking with gas. This brings me back to the thing I mentioned earlier with broken builds. If you're a fan of creating devastating combinations of items to unleash insane amounts of damage, look no further. Items can stack as well as certain items that can combine with each other to create a godlike build that makes you fly around the screen like you own the place. See, in my Brilatro review, I wanted to get that same feeling. 
but it just wasn't the same. Maybe because my screen was just too static. But this game reminded me a lot of, say, Vampire Survivors as well as Hades. Both games give you that mental stimulation of creating interesting ways to create insane power, but also serving your retinas with some incredible visual stimulation too. Also, runs don't have to stop at the final boss either. You can instead do multiple loops, meaning that you don't fight the end boss and instead go back to the beginning. And this is where you're gonna start seeing some crazy shit right there. See, the game's enemy difficulty keeps increasing too, past the point where it says hard and insane and instead just hits you with just this constant laughing. Bursts of color and lights light up your screen like a Christmas tree and yet the game does run smoothly. But if you're on a potato laptop, these scenes can leave your PC quite perplexed. In terms of performance, for my i5 laptop, I never really had a problem. It was actually one of the reasons why I got this game in the first place and it didn't actually require that much to run. The game runs buttery smooth, even in multiplayer. The cell shaded light graphics might not be for everyone, but the muted background colors and designs are needed for all the crazy mischief happening on the screen. And then we have the sound. And honestly, I think the artist Chris Christolu, Chris, 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 Chris is almost as popular as the game itself. Banging guitar tunes fill your ear with each stage. Some might not enjoy it as it feels quite juxtaposed to the intense action you witness on screen sometimes. I wasn't the biggest fan initially, but sometimes it slaps and I really enjoy leaving it play sometimes. <laughs> For me personally though, I think the game is best played listening to music that just gets you hyped. Whether it be heavy speed metal or chill techno, or even the Batman trilogy soundtrack, or just some filthy drum and bass. It's a game that excels when it's fueled by your own music that sucks you in. For me, it was just some disgusting drum and bass that kept me playing for hours. It was just too much fun. The in-game sounds are good, the guns sound like guns, but it's the enemy sounds that really do it justice, as each enemy can be eventually distinguished by ear alone, which is extremely useful in third-person play. Now, as mentioned, there is also multiplayer, ranging from two to four players, which multiplies the fun tenfold. It's a unique game that it's both fun solo and with friends. But obviously with other players, there is a sense of this twisted camaraderie as you battle finding the best builds. And obviously that game difficulty scales with the more players you have. I must say though that it's really satisfying to kill a boss with all your friends gathering around screaming. It's just utter chaos and highly recommended. You could also jump into those random online multiplayer runs too, but beware, some players out there have been playing it for many years and just want to fly around through maps as quickly as possible. And during the editing of this video, there's currently one DLC out now, Survivors of the Void. It ties into the story very well and sees you with more twisted items and characters to enhance your gameplay. With the DLC, you get two bonus characters, more items, more enemies, and more environments. Is it worth getting? 100%, especially if you're enjoying the initial game. But I would say maybe turn it off in the initially while you're still learning how to play as it can be pretty confusing when first playing as it throws in some more elements that might put some players off, especially if you're pretty confused. <laughs> some weird shit starts getting thrown into some levels, and if you aren't comfortable with the mechanics and just jump into a void area without knowing what's what, you're gonna get wrecked. You can just turn this off when starting a game, so you can see for yourself which you enjoy more, and it's something I quite enjoy with each run, is that you can choose which mechanics you want on and off. With the DLC, you also get an alternate game mode, the Simulacrum, an endless wave-based style where you can try and see how many levels you can complete. It's hard, but immensely fun, especially when you understand the various items. I feel like more roguelikes need something like this, to be honest. It just adds to that replayability, something very close to my heart. Like with most roguelikes, you can't talk about the game without mentioning its replayability. I've played quite a few over the years, including Into the Breach, FTL, Enter the Gungeon, Don't Starve, Vampire Survivors, Slay the Spire, Dead Cells, Hades, The Binding of Isaac, Downwell, Synthetic 2, and Darkest Dungeon. If you enjoyed Dead Cells, Enter the Gungeon, Hades, and The Binding of Isaac, then this game is right down your alley. See, Risk of Rain 2 not only kept me coming back, 
but it's one of those rare games I can still play in my downtime. Why? Well, it might be different for other people, but there's a certain rhythm you get once your items sync up, and this is when a thought comes in, I am literally unstoppable right now. And a sense of calm washes over your body and this relaxation kicks in. Hear me out, it's a bit like a driving game, flying game, and maybe those few other roguelikes. After a certain amount of hours played, it sucks you into a world where almost everything goes on autopilot. Say with my favorite character, Loda, for instance, I don't have a worry, I don't have any fear. I can swing around like a monkey in a zoo, and I know my item stacks can handle most of what's going to be on the screen, so I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the music and intense action on the screen. If you know a better word to describe this feeling, please let me know in the comment section. Did I try to unlock all the items? Kinda. I'm not a completionist anymore, but this game is just so rewarding in its mechanics alone that I wasn't too bothered about trying to finish it with every character. I just enjoyed swinging around like Spider-Man, smashing enemies in the face. Let's also not forget all the items, characters, and their individual abilities all to unlock. And then you can get that whoop out and just try out some of those Eclipse challenges where you can try to compete a run with, with these certain setbacks. And trust me, as much as I enjoy the game, this was just really hard and it was just too much punishment for me. That being said, there's enough to keep you coming back for more multiplayer, extra game modes, as well as those DLCs. Yes, that new one should be released soon all tie into a game that is still high on the Steam charts after all these years. Risk of Rain 2 is flexible, dynamic, and extremely well polished. It's not often that a roguelike has grabbed my attention to this degree. Yes, my brain is all about them colors, sounds, and fluid gameplay, but it's more than that. This game is quite simply fun and addictive and has you constantly ride the line of RNG and skill. I always say this channel is about games you can get lost in. This game might not seem very deep, but trust me, it really is. There are tons of secrets to uncover, all while constantly running around like a mad thing, shooting everything in your path. I can spend hours playing just because of this. And so, is it worth playing in 2024? Well, <laughs> I think you already know my answer to that. I love this game from beginning to end, not that there really is one. And with the announcement of their upcoming DLC coming soon, Risk of Rain 2 is definitely going into my recommendations list. Have you played a roguelike before? What has been your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. But other than that, it's Marco here from Easily Distracted Games. And most of all, don't stop gaming. <laughs>